Now, the second qu tricky question is part E. Now, some of you are like, that wasn't a tricky question, okay? If you, if you know the answer to this, don't spoil it for everyone else, okay? So a lot of you said, yeah, I recognize this question. I've done these to death. The limit, blah, blah, blah. I know what this, um, this sign on x, or I could have made 10 or whatever, okay? I know what to do here. I need this 2x to be the same on the top and the bottom. So you're like, cool, I'll put a 2 there. I'll put a 2 there. It's 2, right? Because this limit is 1. Right? Right? Next. Okay, so, so, you got caught if you didn't read the question, okay? Because most of us, our brain, you know, Pavlov's dog, that kind of thing. You see sign on X, sign whatever on X, and um, you start going into a, a, an automatic sort of mechanical procedure, okay? So, if you missed out that the limit's approaching infinity, okay, you would have just written this down and you'd be dead wrong, okay? So, what does it mean? that we're approaching infinity and not zero, okay? Um, and this is not a result that you're expected to memorize, but you ought to be able to think about it, okay? If I gave you, for instance, um, y equals one over x, nice simple graph, now you know what this looks like, right? So if I said, well, let's apply a limit to it, okay, you'd all right away say, zero, zero. okay, now, you can say zero because you know what one over x looks like, right? But how do you argue, like, what's the logic that explains why it approaches zero? And the answer is, what you have on the top is basic, is a constant. It's a constant. Okay. You have a constant being divided by something that's getting bigger. Okay? So it's going to get the whole thing, the fraction is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay? Um, if I were to flip it upside down, or if I had some other kind of um, limit as x approaches infinity, if I gave you this, for instance, You've got the same thing on the denominator. It's growing, but it's growing at a linear rate, a constant rate, okay? Whereas this is growing at an increasing rate, right? It's a parabola, yeah. So that's why this is going to be equal to x, okay? You can do the cancel and you can see, right? So how do you apply that logic of limits and, and ratios to this kind of question, right? Which one is this more similar to this one when you compare to those two? Yeah, it's more similar to this one. Now, we don't quite have a constant up the top, do we? But we've got something that's pretty close to a constant, right? Because how does sine x, sine 2x, or sine 3x, how does it behave? It's, um, it looks like this, right? And it's always between these boundaries. Okay, so it's not constant, but it's like a constant in that it's never going to get bigger than that, okay? Or, or, or smaller. Okay. And I'm dividing by something which is increasing, okay? So the denominator is going to take over, and it's just equal to zero. So this is what I mean. Read the question carefully. Don't just go into um, go into autopilot. Now it's not by accident that this is in question one, right? Because question one is where you're like, okay, just got into the exam hall. Um, your brain's not really switched on, so you make you make silly errors like this, and they look pretty okay. They look, it looks it looks you know it's only one mark. You're probably not going to come back and look at it and check, right? Um, but that's that's exactly what we're checking for you to do. Come back and have a look. Question one is where. Um, you know, 90% of people's silly errors come from because the brain's not in here yet. So if you wrote down two without thinking, then please fix it. Yeah. Okay, now can you just sub in infinity? No. Because infinity is not a number. It's an idea. It's this it's this concept of going as far as you possibly can, but it doesn't have a meaningful numerical value. Okay. As opposed to zero, like when you got when we did first principles, for instance, if you're doing this, uh, this is how you differentiate the square root of x by first principles, right? Uh, sorry, that should be an h. In this case, h has a meaning, right? Once you rationalize the numerator, I am actually going to sub zero in because zero is a number. Infinity, you can't do it. Yeah. Did I just realize? If you have slide right and you put in like a really really huge number, you can't handle it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wait, yeah. So then, if you can't sub in how would you show what? If they said just about how many marks is this question? Right, but if they said justify two. If they said justify, well, how how did I justify it? Right. I argued from the nature of what sine two x is, uh, maybe that it's well. So you guys haven't put that simple combination yet. Uh, it's bounded, basically. That's that's the idea. It's between minus one and one. It'll never grow. That's the important thing. Whereas x is unbounded. It just grows forever. It gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Therefore, the denominator will take over in terms of importance, and that's why you will get zero. That's the way I'd argue.